we now have a, a workshop on cultural retail and we're going to tell you about the jury's favorites. We have a number of uh, French members of the jury and they're going to tell us about their choices. Stephanie Bernet, director of retail collections at Arteum. Aurélie Bréjean, director of uh, product marketing at the Grand Palais. Jérôme Pellet was supposed to be there. He's from the Domaine de Chambord. Unfortunately, he was not able to make it today because of health issues. And we also have Marguerite de Meserac, who's in charge of tourism development at Chateau de Canon, and uh, Sophie Languillaume, director of Popache, which I'm sure uh, you know, which is specializing in attractivity and performance of uh, the uh, cultural offer. You have the floor. Uh, thank you and welcome, everyone. We're delighted to be with you today. The uh, idea was that we have a number of trends that have been identified, and we will soon be seeing the PowerPoint, and we'll be able to comment on those trends. So for each of those trends, we'll be showing you one product that is part of our selection. So we have six trends. Made in locally is the first one with uh, local products, a collaboration, and you'll see a number of excellent collaborations with Marguerite. Diversity and engagement, which uh, is at the basis of our choices in our shops, um, fair trade, uh, local circuits, etc. Kids is the third category, feel good. We are in an era of uh, doing things more slowly and uh, we'll be looking at eco-friendly products and well-being products there. So for each of those trends, we'll have one specific product and we're starting with Marguerite. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marguerite de Mesrac. I work in the Calvados department in Normandy, and I'm in charge of the Chateau de Canon, which is best known for its gardens. We have a small shop, and I'm delighted to be with you today. Um, as part of the jury, we were able to discover a number of fantastic products, but we had to select one, and so our favorite in the collaboration trend is this one. And we need to unfold this object that you can see here. It's a scarf. It is a scarf then, but not just any scarf. It was made together with the BNF and Inui edition. So this uh, scarf was entirely drawn from archives of Parisian maps taken from the BNF, the National uh, Library. And I thought that it was an uh, excellent idea to have that on scarf. It was a redrawn, of course. There are a, also a few uh, imaginary beasts uh, at the bottom of the scarf to try and uh, give some uh, more uh, ample movement to the uh, rather straight lines of the map. And uh, I also thought that it was wonderful that there were variations on the same thing. There's a total of 13 different scarves with different colors uh, that you can see on the slide as well. So it's a beautiful archive that is uh, uh, displayed there and that will be sold not just at the BNF but also in other shops in Paris. It's 50% uh, uh, wool, 20% cashmere wool and 30% cotton. It's a fantastic product. It's very beautifully made and I thought that it was uh, a great pro product. And uh, here you can see the other examples, uh, some uh, rectangular and others square in shape. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marguerite. All right. 
We'll take questions and answers later after we've seen all the products. We will be answering them later, so feel free to ask your questions, but not just now, because now we're turning to Stephanie. Good afternoon. As you can see, about half of the audience is part of my team at Arteum. So I made sure that uh, everyone in my department would be there. I am in charge of purchases and collections at Arteum. We select products for about uh, 15 museums, and of course, the purchasing team uh, is there today because uh, obviously I don't do all the work by myself. So Arteum is in charge of about 15 museum shops in Paris, uh, outside of Paris as well, in France and in Europe. And we always try to make sure that we have an offer of products that is really made to measure for the shop that we are working for. So for us, we're looking at diversity and engagement, and we're looking at an embroidery kit. Uh, you can find them uh, here today on the premises of the trade show. I don't remember where exactly, but you can find them. We were working with the Carnavalet Museum in Paris. And those embroidery kits are very uh, committed to the issue of women's rights and feminism. So the idea here is that you have needlework, which is a typically feminine occupation. However, the uh, pictures themselves are not very typical or uh, they try to uh, really give another angle to the issue of feminism. And I think that's a, that's a great way to really bring feminism to the light. Thank you. Should I go on? You can. And uh, what about them? Tell us about the kids' trends. Yes, thank you. That's another trend that is uh, up and coming in many shops. Kids, uh, that's a very important category for us. They are pioneers. Lucille uh, will tell you that now we have a lot of different products for uh, children today to try and raise awareness among children, to also give them a taste uh, for culture. And Bio Viva is a French brand that develops all of its packagings and cards and products in France. And they have a really play-centric uh, approach on issues that are related to the health of the planet. So biodiversity and uh, uh, associated topics. They also have a foundation which means that whenever you buy a BioViva product, part of the proceeds go to the foundation. And this foundation has a number of projects on childhood, and they have a lot of wonderful causes. And I think it's good that you have products that are fun, for one thing, but that are also part of something bigger and uh, that are committed to bigger causes. And you have one more to cover? All right, that's the made in locally trend with uh, the uh, sailor's belt. This is a local product, but a part uh, of our shops have as a mission uh, that we want to show products of young uh, creators. We can hear you to go on. All uh, right. <laughs> I think three trends was just one too many. OK, so this uh, belt, this uh, sailor's belt, as the product is called, you have two people who are passionate about sailing. They are based in Nice. And once uh, they saw a sailor who came back from his uh, sailing expedition with a, a ship rope, 
wound around his waist. And they thought that it was actually very interesting, and they decided to develop that. They uh, used copper as an end to this rope, and they turned this very basic rope into a fashion product that is both the kind of things that you would expect from a sailor, but also a very trendy item. So you can tie it and knot it in any way you like. And they also give a lot of different ideas on how you can uh, tie it up. And if you know your sailor's knots, then maybe you can show us. I'm not going to demonstrate it, am I? No, not you. <laughs> this is getting intense. All right, so you have the two ends of your rope. And first, we'll do a simple uh, knot, exactly in the same way that you would tie your laces. And then another one in the other direction. And that's a flat knot that is used uh, for sailing because it makes it possible to tie together uh, anything that you want on your ship. So that's the basic knot that you use if you need to tie together your sails, for example. So that's the most basic one. Congrats. Thank you. Aurélie. Thank you. My name is Aurélie Bréjean, and I work at the um, RMN for Grand Palais. We have 34 shops in France. And for my first selection, we're looking at the eco-friendly trend. This is a product that uh, ties into the idea that we all have challenges when it comes to ecological responsibility and sustainability. So that's a, a tote bag made of wood fiber, which means that you're going to consume a lot less water than with a cotton fabric. And I thought that was great. This is a great uh, symbol for all the challenges that we have in the textile industry to really move forward and uh, we have the latest creation of uh, the uh, textile sustainable services. So that's my first selection. And the second one? This one is uh, also in the eco-friendly uh, category, but it's for kids. So it's both kids and eco-friendly. Like uh, Stephanie was saying, in the kids category, there is a, uh, really a lot of opportunities in the future. And uh, this product uh, comes from Nature Planet. It's plastic, but made from wheat fiber. It's uh, very difficult to create a toy. I'm really t talking about a typical toy and not like a board game or something like that that you can base from uh, paper and carton. But uh, here it's, it's a really a toy. And the idea was to find a way to be able to offer a typical toy, but that would still be somewhat sustainable, that would be more eco-friendly than your typical plastic toys. So we're working on that. Thank you, Aurélie. And the uh, last product is in the feel-good category, and I selected Chopette. First, because I love the name, but not just. So this is what it is. You uh, can really tailor it to your tastes. It's uh, entirely customizable, which we love. If you don't like to have stripes, you can have something else entirely. And the same thing for the cap. You can change it entirely. And it's, it's uh, made uh, from a fabric that is used uh, usually to make slippers. 
So that's uh, that means that your flask is going to be kept warm or cold, as the case may be. The glass is recyclable, of course, and recycled. So when it comes to eco-responsibility and sustainability, glass is always a good choice. Everything is done in the Charente region in French, in France, sorry, uh, except for the glass parts that are made in Italy. And we're always trying to find new products and we don't want to be only able to offer, you know, pens and paper in our shops. And I thought that shop it. This uh, little flask was fun and a good choice. Do you have any questions? Uh, if you don't, I do. Okay. No one, really, on any of the products? All right. Then I'm turning to you, ladies. I do have questions. Oh, we have someone there, a brave one. One of the brands uh, which products you selected for the pop-up store uh, is a brand that I represent. And I think um, it's a shame that we don't have some kind of sticker or something like that to show that we've been selected in, in your uh, product selection. And you could have something like that, a product category also with a dedicated color or something like that to really show uh, that we've been selected. All right, that's a very good idea. What, what's your brand? You did not name it. Carawan Authentic. I've got uh, Ayurvedic soaps wrapped in palm leaves. We have a textile jewelry made in Turkey. And we have a multifunction futa made of organic cotton as well. Thank you. All right. So my question to you ladies is as follows. How do we make sure that in our shops we both have local products made in France, but also with products uh, that remain affordable? Well, um, I think the first thing that I could do would be to stop paying my team. But more seriously, we have to work with decreasing our margins. It's either that or volume. If we have enough volume, then we can have the same margin. Or if we want to have a small a niche products made in France and we have very small margins. And that means that in parallel to that, we're going to need to have bigger margins on other products. We need to find a way to uh, to have some money coming in from somewhere. So yes, uh, that's definitely a day-to-day -day issue. And we, we need to work on that a lot. Uh, but today, having products shipped in from very far away, that's something that we don't want to have anymore, not just for uh, ecological reasons, but also because it's very expensive. But we don't want to have containers, you know, circling the globe three times before it gets to us. So that's part of what we're looking at when we decide on our purchases. And we also have uh, much longer discussions when it comes to the pricing of our products. It's been the case ever since we started producing in France. It, it's also, it also means that uh, we need to work on uh, other issues. But when it comes to time to market, we're much more reactive because now that we develop some um, and make the products in France or in Europe, it means that we are much more agile. Yes, I absolutely agree with Stephanie. So we have a made in France and made in Europe products. Uh, there is a re-industrialization, if you will, in, in Europe. Uh, we are nearshoring a lot of activities that used to be offshore to Asia. Uh, it's not always possible to have products that are entirely made in France. So it's better to have them made in Europe rather than made in Asia, which does not fit in with our strategy. So made in Europe is a solution there. You don't want to ne neglect that. 
and many French companies have their products manufactured in Europe, actually, not always just in France. So it, it does feed into this pipeline. We uh, are quite a small site, so I think that uh, our example is uh, uh, probably a little bit different from the other speaker's point of view. Sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? Yes, volume. We can't. We can't buy huge volumes. Uh, we are really a small actor on the market. We do not shape the market. And that means that we need to be very creative. I uh, work a lot with local creators who are able to display their products in my shop. And that means that we can have artisanal products uh, in a very simple manner. But for some products, I just can't find a substitute product. So I do have some products that are made uh, very far from my shop, but uh, I have not been able to substitute everything with locally made products. Other questions? Uh, I have the glare of the, <laughs> of the headlights blinding me, I can't see. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, in well, there are a lot of different uh, museums, small museum shops everywhere, but I don't see why you can't purchase together, why you can't join up forces and uh, have a collective purchasing services. Can I ask you what your site is? Are you part of a private or public uh, institution? We, we are a small castle, uh, Volvicont in, in cinema. Oh, so you're part of the same network I am then. Uh, that is a, a possibility that we've been looking at uh, within the Audacio du Patrimoine network. So we do have uh, collective uh, purchases uh, and uh, we've been uh, discussing it and the possibilities that come with it because we would like to develop some products together. And we just had a workshop where we discussed that on how we could do that and buy together. But I think that the main interest, the main uh, advantage that we would get from that would be that there are many objects that we all sell uh, that are some of our top sales. And they are made or manufactured very far away from, from home. And uh, maybe we could group uh, together to buy them. I think we had another question, but really I can't see. Hello. Apologies for the English question. Um, could you tell us whether um, Brexit has totally killed the possibility of buying from the UK or whether you're still okay to deal with any of the UK suppliers? Who would like to answer that? <laughs> I'm going to answer in French. Uh, well, Brexit, of course, uh, was an issue. We had suppliers that we had been working with for years and years, and we had to stop working with them. Uh, because uh, they uh, could not have uh, premises in France or in Europe, uh, warehouses in Europe, where uh, it that would have made it easier to work with us. They were not able to do that, so we had to replace them, unfortunately. So yes, uh, on that front, Brexit was indeed an issue. And I think uh, it's been a problem for suppliers in the UK in particular. Yes, the problem that we had mostly was uh, prices because it's, it, it became more expensive. 
at uh, Grand Palais. We tried to keep working with some of our long-standing partners. Uh, we had long-time experience and partnerships with some of our suppliers. And because of that, we were able to work together to find a solution to that uh, issue of additional costs. But we do know that it's, uh, it had a big impact on UK suppliers. We're very aware of that. But I think that, yes, indeed, our panel of UK suppliers uh, decreased quite a lot. All right. And I think it's time to wrap up, which is a shame because this uh, conversation was very interesting. But we have limited time. So many thanks to all of you. Uh, please do go and take a look at the pop-up store when you come out of this space. It's on your right. It's been lovely having you. Enjoy your afternoon.